All right, now that I'm done complaining about the out-of-touch old people that run YouTube, let's talk about another group of out-of-touch old people. The Academy. <laughs> so I'm recording this the morning of um, March 4th before the Oscars. Um, I will not be posting it till after the Oscars. In fact, I'll probably be filming a post-Oscars discussion tomorrow and tacking that on to the end of this video. So, right now, I don't know who won or what happened. I doubt anything as interesting as last year is gonna happen <laughs> this year, honestly. Although, J Jimmy Kimmel's hosting again, and that bothers me a little bit, because he hosted last year. Like, get, get someone new. It's, it's not even like he was that good of a host. It, it kind of feels like, oh, gee, uh, sorry, things went so haywire, Jimmy. Let's, uh, we'll make it up to you. We'll make, well, you can do it next year as well to make up for this year, for how terrible you did this year, <laughs> for how terrible things went this year. I think Faye Dunaway and uh, Warren Beatty are announcing Best Picture, or or yeah, are announcing Best Picture again this year. I think I read that somewhere. Anyways, let's. I'm gonna go in like the reverse order that the Oscars is gonna go in, because they do this tricky little thing where they have all the ones no one gives a shit about first, interspersed with ones that maybe you give a little bit of a shit about. It'll be like oh, sound editing and best short film. Then we like oh, best animated feature. Okay, I care about that. And then it'll be like, oh, best whatever the fuck. And it's like, we're just here for, like, best picture, best actor, best actress, best director. But they save that till the very end, just to keep you watching. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start with best picture. Um, I'm going to go over both who I think should win, who, who I think is going to win, and who I think should win. Okay? And I think... Three Billboards is definitely going to win Best Picture. Like, it, that's not a surefire thing. I mean, last year everyone thought La La Land was a surefire thing. And it was for all of 20 seconds. <laughs> it's still anyone's game. It's not guaranteed Three Billboards is going to win. I'm just saying Three Billboards because there's a lot of buzz around it. It could easily be Call Me By Your Name or... Uh, Shape of Water. Um, I haven't seen Call Me By Your Name. I live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. No movies come here. So, I haven't seen Call Me By Your Name or Phantom Thread. Which is very unfortunate. Call, Call Me By Your Name, I think, comes out of, it comes to the red box, like, next week. It's like, man, could you get that in the red box before the Oscars, man? Come on. I don't know when Phantom Thread's coming out. I I could go see it in theaters, but it'd be an hour and a half drive to the closest theater that's showing it. So call, call Me By Your Name or Shape of Water, I could also see winning. Um, but those are... It's it's those three. It's going to be one of those three. It's not going to be Get Out, which is what I want to win. If you saw my year in review video, you know Get Out was my favorite movie of the year. And <laughs> it just stands no chance of winning. And I've I've seen a lot of people online complaining like, oh, it's the racist Academy's not gonna pick it. It's not because they're racist. In fact, they're trying way too hard to be progressive. And in fact, that's probably the only reason Get Out even got nominated is because they're trying to be progressive. Um, the Academy hates horror movies. It hates all genre movies, honestly. But horror movies most of all. In the history of the Academy, five horror movies, including Get Out. So before this year, it was only four. Four horror movies were nominated for Best Picture. Uh, and only one won. That was Silence of the Lambs, which... Yeah, that absolutely was the Best Picture of that year. Uh, it was The Exorcist, Jaws, and... Sixth Sense were the other ones. So, you know, no love for The Shining, no love for Alien, uh, no love for... 
any of these great horror movies that came out, I could sit here all day and list horror movies that deserved at least a nomination. You know, when Get Out doesn't win, don't be like, oh, it's a bunch of old racist white dudes. No, it's just because they hate horror movies. They're a bunch of pretentious white dudes who think that, you know, genre movies are beneath them. But it's not because they're racist. It's it's because they're pretentious fucks. Uh, Best actor, Daniel Day-Lewis is going to win. Again, I haven't seen Phantom Thread. Honestly, I haven't seen most of the movies where people are up for best actor. So I don't really have an opinion on who should win best actor. I do have an opinion but uh, of who should have been nominated that didn't. But uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, like, highly critically acclaimed actor. A lot of people call him the greatest actor of all time. And he's retiring. This is his last film. So, yeah, he's going to win. It's, <laughs> it's not even a question. It's going to be Daniel Day-Lewis, who I think should have been nominated. It's, it kind of sucks. There was a lot of buzz around the disaster artist and James Franco's performance specifically. Because it's really good. He's really good in that movie. And then a bunch of sexual assault charges came out against him. And the Academy's like, hmm, having none of that. Because that's a hot button issue this year. Even though last year they gave it to Casey Affleck. Who also has a bunch of sexual assault charges against him. Or sexual harassment charges. I want to get my facts straight here. Like, you can't, you can't give, they, they gave Best Actor to Casey Affleck. It wasn't like he was just nominated. He won with all those sexual assault charges. And it's like, sexual, sexual harassment's bad. Don't do it. It's disgusting. Uh, people who do it should not have jobs, okay? They should not be, we should not be promoting them. But if we're going to go ahead and honor one of them for being a good actor, let's acknowledge all of them that are good actors, okay? <laughs> you, can't, you can't pick and choose because last year it just wasn't as hot button of an issue as it is now. Uh, best actress, Sally Hawkins. It's, <laughs> she's going to win. I think she should win. It, it's not going to be anyone but Sally Hawkins. If it is anyone but Sally Hawkins, I'm going to be very put out, okay? Best director, probably Del Toro. Um, he's a repeat offender. He's he's been up for Oscars before. Um, and it's just it's a really well directed uh, Shape of Water, really well directed movie. Looks amazing. Um, he's not he's not who I want to win best director. Although I f I am fine with him winning best. It's not like I'm like. Oh, I can't believe they picked him over Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele would be my pick. It's... it's oh, Get Out just looks great. The acting is great. It's so well directed. well So well constructed. Also, <laughs> I do believe he was the best director of the year. Honestly, I believe that was the best directed movie of the year. Also, a black man has never won best director. Not, I'm not saying they should give it to him just because he's black. I'm saying they should give it to him because he's a great director. And he absolutely deserves to be the first black best director winner. Because, you know, they also nominated Greta Gerwig. And, like, I liked Lady Bird. It was a good movie. There's not much to the directing of that movie, you know? It's a very simple, very quiet movie. Like, I, I don't see how... You put anyone else in that director's chair. It's not going to be all that different. I guess up for best screenplay. Totally deserves that. Well written movie. It's up for best picture, I think. You know, I can see that. That's totally fair. <laughs> um, she's not not best director. You only you only did that because she's a woman, and there are just not a lot of female directors. And I absolutely think we should support female directors because there just aren't enough of them. Um, don't act like she was the best director of the year. She's not going to win. It's going to be Guillermo del Toro. Al almost assuredly Guillermo del Toro. Maybe, shoot, who directed Three Billboards? 
Matt should have done his research. Third billboards outside Emming, Missouri. Martin McDonough. McDonough. I don't know how to pronounce that. He might win. Is he nominated? Matt was wrong. He's... Okay, I, I, I was wrong. I'll admit... I'll admit this. He's not up for best director. <laughs> My bad. How can you be up for best picture and not best director? Like... There's definitely some movie character that was talking about that, and I can't remember what movie it was. But I totally agree. You can't, you can't have the best movie without best direct without the best director. That makes me think maybe Three Billboards won't win if he didn't get nominated for best director. Then there's a chance Three Billboards won't win best picture. It might go to Shape of Water, or Call Me by Your Name because <laughs> the Academy is progressive. But we got our gay movie last year. And it was good. I liked Moonlight. I thought I tweeted out after I saw Moonlight. I'm like, not the best movie of the year. But I think it deserves best picture. And it did. It won best picture. I called it like two months in advance. Best supporting actor. This is anyone's game. I'm picking Willem Dafoe. Because I really liked Willem Dafoe in, in Florida Project. I feel like Best Supporting Actor is always kind of up in the air. Like last year I didn't know who to pick for this category. And like when Mahershala Ali won, <laughs> his speech was very like, Oh crap, I, I didn't expect to win. <laughs> it seemed kind of like, Oh, uh, uh, mom would want me to button up. <laughs> Best Supporting Actress, Octavia Spencer. Not even. <laughs> it's gonna be Octavia Spencer. <laughs> you know, the more the more I'm reading this, the more I'm like, no. Shape of Water is gonna win. I might change my answer to Shape of Water. Best Adapted Screenplay. Call Me By Your Name. Um, again, I haven't seen it. Just cause kind of the concept didn't appeal to me. If everyone was describing it, it's like, oh, it's just like... Two hours, this romance between these two dudes, and there's not really a plot. And I'm like, I like movies with plots. I don't, I don't want to just see two characters having a relationship. Unless it's a Richard Linklater movie. Linklater does that really well. Um, but it's not a Richard Linklater movie. <laughs> Linklater knows how to write characters so interesting, the movie doesn't need a plot. <laughs> Like, uh, Before Sunrise. One of the best romance movies out there. No plot. There's no plot. It's so good. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'd like Call Me By Your Name. I haven't seen it. I can't judge it. I will see it. I promise. Best Original Screenplay. I'm kind of torn on this one. I... Because the... Oh, look how progressive we are! Oscars might pick Lady Bird. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of buzz around three billboards, and I think I think both have equally as good a shot getting adapted screenplay. Um, or original screenplay, my bad. I would want Get Out to win, although <laughs> The Big Sick is up for original screenplay. Which kind of shocks me that that was the only Oscar The Big Sick was up for, because that was a really good movie. And also one I feel like the Academy would have been into. I'd kind of like to see the big sick one that one, just because I really liked that movie and it got nominated for, like, no Oscars. But, I mean, you know. That's one, like, Get Out, Lady Bird, uh, The Big Sick, I would be fine, uh, even Shape of Water, I would be fine with all of those winning. If Three Billboards wins, I might be a little salty. I mean, I liked it. It was a good movie. I didn't like it that much. I thought I thought a lot of the characters were really shitty characters. Like, they're just terrible people. And then they spend, like, half the movie, like, all these characters who've been shitty people the whole movie. All of them are trying to have a redemption arc. And it's... <sighs> whole movie was fine. Uh, best animated feature, Coco. It's... If a Disney or Pixar movie is up for Best Animated Feature, it's going to win. 
this is not even a question. I think the one time a non-Disney or Pixar movie won was Rango. I think that's the only non-Disney movie to ever win Best Animated Feature. And Rango wasn't even that good, honestly. <laughs> like, it was fine. I liked it. But, like, Best Animated Feature? What? I think that was the year Cars 2 came out. And even... <laughs> that At least then the Academy's like, Okay, we can't nominate that. Like, try a little bit. And we'll give it to you. It's like last year, Zootopia... I, I knew Zootopia was going to be Kubo on the two strings. Kubo so deserved it. Um, Lego Movie didn't even get nominated. I'm definitely pissed about that. I think that should have been up for Best Picture. Fuck Best Animated Feature. Best Picture. Lego Movie. Nominee. It did. Birdman was going to win. Birdman deserves it. <laughs> this category is such a farce this year. Like, Boss Baby is up. I saw five animated movies last year, and without seeing Boss Baby, I guarantee four of them were better than Boss Baby. One of them was Coco. The, the Lego Ninjago movie was better than Boss Baby. Lego Batman movie, better than Boss Baby. Captain Underpants, better than Boss Baby. From the studio that made Boss Baby. I think Ferdinand's, Ferdinand the Bull is up too. And it's like... Why not Captain Underpants? Is it just because the title is Captain Underpants? I haven't seen Ferdinand. Probably better than Ferdinand as well. I kind of liked it, honestly. But you know. Ugh. Toilet humor. It's below the Academy. Huh. Best score. Phantom Thread? I, I don't know, maybe Dunkirk, because, you know, um, fuck, I totally blanked on this. That's like one of the few composers I know. Oh, Hans Zimmer, Hans Zimmer. Maybe, maybe it'll be Dunkirk because of Hans Zimmer. Otherwise, I, again, I haven't seen Phantom Thread. Maybe, maybe Dunkirk, maybe Phantom Thread. Totally unsure. Best cinematography. Probably Dunkirk, unfortunately. I think Blade Runner 2049 deserves it. That's... Blade Runner 2049 is getting screwed. Let me flip that back. Denis Villanova is getting screwed. He deserved Best Director. He deserved Best Picture last year. Okay, I, I mean, I was fine... Again, I was fine with Moonlight beating out Arrival... But Denis Villeneuve, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. He deserved Best Director. Amy Adams deserved Best Actress, although I have a theory about that. Because she was in both Arrival and Nocturnal Animals. And frankly, she was a lot better in Nocturnal Animals. She, she was really good in that movie. She was really good in that movie. I liked that movie. Recommend it. And I think what happened was there was kind of a split vote. Like, some of the people were saying Nocturnal Animals. Some of them were saying Arrival. And Amy Adams just got too, like, not enough votes for either of them to get nominated. Which is unfortunate. She was great in both of them. To both Oscar-worthy performances. Best Visual Effects, Blade Runner. Not even... <laughs> Like, if the Academy doesn't pick Blade Runner for this category, what the fuck? So, I mean, that's the one category where you can get away with a genre movie. Because there aren't really special effects in non-genre movies. <laughs> Best editing, Baby Driver. Gotta be Baby Driver. <laughs> Please don't pick something other than Baby Driver. Edgar Wright is getting screwed worse than Denis Villeneuve. At least Denis Villeneuve has gotten some nominations. Edgar Wright, all five of his movies are probably in the top ten movies of the year they came out, and he has not received a single nomination. Because, again, the Academy hates genre films. Especially comedies. <laughs> not a big fan of comedies or genre films. You know, like horror movies, um, action movies... I guess I guess World's End was sci-fi. I don't know what Scott Pilgrim was. I think 
I guess that probably would just fall under comedy. Maybe action, action comedy. All of those were great movies. All of those deserve nominations. They were never going to get them. Edgar Wright deserves better than this. Baby Driver, best editing. Also, best sound mixing and sound editing. There is a difference. The Academy does not know what the difference is. At least most of them don't know what the difference is. If you look at the nominees, it's the exact same nominees for both categories. <laughs> Baby Driver's gonna win. Best sound editing, best sound mixing, and best editing. All three. Baby Driver. Best costume design. I'm guessing Phantom Thread because it's about designing dresses. Uh, best production design. Probably Dunkirk. Unfortunately, again, Blade Runner 2049 definitely deserves it over Dunkirk. And best makeup. I I didn't do a lot of categories because I haven't seen any of the short films or any of the foreign films or any of the, like the, the animated short films. I, had, I think those are the only three I didn't... Oh, and original song. Best original song. I haven't heard the songs, any of them, actually. Also, best documentary. Oops. So, best makeup. Last one. Only three movies got nominated for best makeup, which is odd to me. It seems like there was plenty of room in there for Guardians of the Galaxy, which had great makeup. I would put Guardians of the Galaxy to win best makeup. But you only, you only nominated three movies for this category. I'm picking Darkest Hour because Gary Oldman is like unrecognizable in that movie. All right, so those are my picks and my angry rants about how terrible the Academy is. Um, fucking predictable circle jerk. And now we transition to me after the Oscars. Take it away, future Matt. Ah, thanks, Past Matt. I'm just here enjoying some delicious water, as seen in Best Picture winner, Shape of Water. I did, on Twitter, change my prediction to Shape of Water before the ceremony started. Um, other than that, I didn't do very well <laughs> at, at my predictions. Uh, it was really... Disappointed Sally Hawkins didn't win Best Actress. Not that I disliked Norm Macdonald. She she did a good job. It just I feel like Sally Hawkins did better. I, I thought she deserved it more. Um, can't say I was too angry that uh, Daniel Day Lewis didn't win because again I didn't see uh, Phantom Thread, so <laughs> I didn't see Darkest Hour either. I like Gary Oldman a lot, so you know I. I have no opinion on that. That I was fine with that. Uh, I got Best Director right. Guillermo del Toro. Man, I didn't get Actor, Actress, Supporting Actor, or Supporting Actress. I was wrong on all four. Um, I was fine with Sam Rockwell winning this, whatever. I really wanted Octavia Spencer to win. I got Adapted Screenplay right. Get Out got original screenplay. Very, very happy about that. Uh, got best score wrong. Didn't have an opinion about that, really. Uh, best cinematography. It was Blade Runner. I, I said it wasn't going to be. I said it was probably going to be Dunkirk, but that I wanted it to be Blade Runner. Glad Blade Runner got it. Blade Runner also got best visual effects, which is like, what else are you going to give it to? If, if anything but Blade Runner had one visual effects, it would prove just how out of touch the Oscars are. Not that they aren't still completely out of touch. Baby Driver got robbed in all three categories it was nominated for. All three times by Dunkirk. Dunkirk didn't even have very good sound mixing. The sound mixing was terrible. They, everything was too loud. You couldn't hear the dialogue very well. Edgar Wright keeps getting robbed, man. Keeps getting robbed. Uh, got costume design. Got best makeup. Got production design. Oh, and I got best animated feature. That one was a shock. 
Who would have guessed that Coco was gonna win? Everyone knew Coco was gonna win. It's the most predictable category every single year. The ceremony was fine. Um, Jimmy Kimmel just... He's fine. He's very generic, inoffensive. That's probably why they keep picking him. It's like, ah, oh, it's Jimmy Kimmel. No one has strong opinions either way about him. So, I mean, you get a you get a late night host like uh, Colbert or Trevor Noah or someone, and oh well, they've got all this political stigma around them. Can't have them. Kimmel's got a little, but uh, not too much. Very inoffensive. He told some decent jokes. Not all of them were good, but all passable. Unlike the cast of Star Wars, who I think got George Lucas to write their fucking jokes. That was awful. They were awful. Greta Gerwig and Laura Dern win cutest couple. Um, no questions about that. I love how the Oscars every year have these montages of clips, and you go, oh, look. It's that movie the Oscars overlooked. Oh, there's another one they overlooked. Look, it's all these great movies the Oscars didn't give a single mention to. It's it's kind of bothersome. It's like, you can't suddenly be like, Oh, we love this movie. But like, you that movie came out, you didn't say jack about it. Because you hate fun. You're a bunch of old guys who hate fun. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and steal jokes from my own Twitter. Oh yes, someone made a Barbarella reference. Good reference. Yeah, I guess that's all I got. Um, not bad. I was happy with some of the picks. I was not too unhappy with the other picks. Um, biggest loss of the night, probably Sally Hawkins. Or Baby Driver. Baby Driver just deserved more nominations in general. End of the video.